Hello everybody and welcome to week two, day one of programming in PHP. Uh, today's lecture is going to be all about conditional logic. Conditional logic is basically asking PHP true or false statements. So the reason we have conditional logic is to check whether or not if something is true or false and if we get the correct response from it we can execute a certain bit of code but if it's the wrong response that code will not be executed so let's jump right into it alright I have this file here called logic.php we're gonna go ahead and start it by opening and closing our PHP tags now uh, in the previous lecture we discussed variables so let's let's create a variable that we want to we want to ask a question about so let's let's just call it first variable and let's assign it a number let's say 8 8 is our number so what kind of questions can we ask this well since it's a number, why don't we ask it if it's, you know, maybe less than or greater than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to or equal to. Or if it's just not a number we want. So, the basic conditional logic statement is using an if statement. So, in order to begin an if statement, we literally just type if. All right, so now we've we've started our little block of code here. And now the code we want to ask the question to, it's going to be inside two parentheses, so an open and a closed parentheses. Now inside of these parentheses, this is where we're going to ask the question. So uh, let's just go down the line and show you what kind of uh, mathematical comparison operators we have. Okay, so the first one we can do let's do uh, less than so first variable so we're saying if first variable now in math the less than was this this left caret so if first variable is less than we'll say 10 All right. so we basically asked the question we can't just stop there and save it and run it because there's nothing, we're not doing anything with this. So in order to answer the question and execute a certain block of code, we want to open and close curly braces. So you have if and then an open parenthesis and then our first variable and then a less than sign and then 10 and then a closed parenthesis and then right after that close parentheses you want to do an open curly brace now the curly braces if you're not sure where they are they're right above the apostrophe on the keyboard just hit shift and then uh, hit the square bracket right above the apostrophe so now inside of these curly braces this is the code that's going to be executed if our conditional statement let me highlight the conditional this is the conditional statement so if this statement is true, then it's going to execu execute any code in here. Cool. So let's answer it. So we know that first variable is less than 10 because we assigned it to the number 8. So we'll just echo out true. And like I said last lecture, there are some cases where a line is not going to end in a semicolon. An if block is one of those exceptions. You do not need the semicolon to close these if statements. You just need the curly braces to surround it. And anything in those curly braces is kind of its own little element. So, since we know first variable is less than 10, let's go back to our browser and see if we get the word true printed on the screen. And we do. Very cool. So now let's let's change first variable to to 10. Now, the question we're asking it now is 10 less than 10? 
The answer is no, it's not. So, since 10 is not less than 10, this code inside these curly braces is not going to get run. Now, what if we want to give it an alternate answer? So, if the answer in our statement isn't true, so if it's false, we want to execute a different piece of code. Simple. So, let's 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 try to ask this ask this in a question form. So, if first variable is less than 10, then echo out true. Else, okay, so now we have a building block, else. Right after the end of the curly brace, you can kind of do it on the next line if you wanted to. I try to keep mine uh, on the same line. That's just personal preference. It's totally up to you. Um, you type else, and then another set of opening and closing curly braces. So now, if first variable is not less than 10, it'll execute the code inside of this block. So, in this one we can do echo false. So now that we have if 10 is less than 10, echo true, else echo false. Cool. So, it's executing the false block of code. Awesome. Now maybe you wanted to ask it another question instead of just going straight from, oh, is it less than 10? To, no, it's not less than 10. Maybe you want to ask it, well, if it's less than 10, echo true, but if it's equal to 10, echo equal. Okay, we can do that. So let's just get rid of that false block of code we just, we just asked. Now, to ask it another question, you would still use else, and then you can say if, else if. I'm going to put my if statement on another line. So else if, and then you can say first variable. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how, how do I see if it's equal? Well, you might be thinking to yourself, just one equal sign. No, that's, that's incorrect. That is an assignment operator. We need to check to see if the value is equal to this value. So to, to compare two, two values of each other, we use a two equal signs. So if first variable equal equal 10. That pretty much it tells us that it equals 10. So now the question we have in store here is, if first variable is less than 10, echo true. Else, if first variable is equal to 10, we can echo out equal. So now if we went back to our web browser, we refresh, we get equal as our result. So what if we went and made this 11? So now we're asking if 11 is less than 10, which it's not, so it'll go to this else if statement, else is 11 equal to 10? No. So you're going to get no output. So if you have a, a large stack of code like this and you want it to all come down to a common element, if none of the things that we asked it were true, we can simply just type else and then another pair of open and curly braces. And then we can echo nothing was true. So now we're asking it and telling it to see if our first variable is less than 10 and if it is echo true but if it's not go to the next block which asks if our first variable is equal to 10 and if it is echo equal but if it's not we echo nothing was true so we refresh this since our first variable is equal to 11 it's gonna it's gonna say that nope it's not less than 10 and then nope it's not equal to 10 so therefore nothing was true pretty standard stuff awesome so this is how you can you can 
build up multiple things together. Uh, after we get done doing the mathematical comparison operators, I'm going to show you another way to ask multiple questions at once, but a much cleaner style. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of everything up until our first question. And I'm just going to add an else echo false. Okay, so our next operator is less than or equal to. So this is literally less than, so the left caret, and then the equal sign. So if our first variable is less than or equal to 10, we'll echo true. I just changed first variable to 10, so we can show you that first variable is now less than or equal to 10. So if I refresh, it's going to be true. Awesome. Alrighty, so that's less than or equal. Now what if we want to see if first variable is greater than 10? Well, you just use the right caret, greater than. And since 10 is not greater than 10, we will get false when we refresh our page. You can also do greater than or equal to 10. And there you have true, because 10 is greater than or equal to 10. And last but not least, I showed you the equal sign like this. But how do we see if it's not equal to? Well, instead of two equal signs, we use an exclamation for point first, and then an equal sign followed directly after it. So now we're asking, is our first variable not equal to 10? And says 10 is equal to 10, we're going to get false. So if we were to change first variable back to 11, since 10 is not equal to 10, it's true now. So it's going to echo out true. Pretty, pretty standard stuff like that. Awesome. Okay, now let's, uh, what if we want to look at two variables and ask them in one, in one question? Alrighty, I'm going to get rid of this, this if statement here. And I'm going to create a second variable. And I'm going to call it 15. Actually, let's make it a string. So, let's make the string equal to hello. So, second variable now has the value of hello. So, in order to ask a multiple step question in one line, is using the and and operator. I, I said that in quotes. I put little quotes in the air. So, we can say if first variable, let's say it's greater than 10. And then like I said, and, and, cool, second variable, and now we want to check if it's equal to hello. So, if the question now we're asking is, if first variable is greater than 10, and second variable is equal to hello, echo true. And since 11 is greater than 10, and second variable is equal to hello, we're going to get true when we refresh our page. Awesome. Now, what, it, what the and says is that everything must be true about this statement. So if I ask first variable is greater than 11 now, we're going to get a blank page because 11 is not greater than 11. However, second variable is still equal to hello. So how do we ask PHP if one is true and the other isn't? Okay, so we want to say or, if or. So if this or that. And to use or, we use two pipes. So, if first variable is greater than 11, two pipes, which stand for OR, OR second variable is equal to hello. So, as long as one of these is true, it will execute that block of code. Now, there's another one, it's called XOR, and that will return true as long as one of these is true but not both of them. That's not a huge deal. 
but it can come in handy and to do XOR uh, you might you might think that this is an exponent but it's not we use the caret so to separate two things by XOR we use this caret so if I were to go and refresh this we're gonna get true because the first variable 11 is not greater than 11 but the second variable is equal to hello so if I were to change this first variable is greater than 11 to greater than 10 so now 11 is greater than 10 we're gonna get a blank page because with XOR only one can be true but they both can't be true you often won't find yourself using XOR, but it's good to know that you have this option. Alrighty, so let's recap. We've learned greater than, we've learned less than, less than and greater than, or equal to, uh, equal to, not equal to, and, or, and XOR. Awesome. So now we have quite a bit of ways to ask PHP questions. Now, you can put as many if statements as you want in this thing. And it's not limited to variables either. You can say you can say if 1 equals 1 if you really wanted to. And since 1 equals 1, we're going to get true. But most of the time you're going to be asking PHP if a variable compared to something else is true or not. So, like I said before, what if we want to ask PHP multiple questions in different steps? Like before we had if it's greater than 10, else if it's equal to 10, else nothing. So, how do we do a really complicated if statement but try to reduce the amount of code we use. Well, with PHP, we can switch cases. So, a switch case is when we tell PHP to look at this variable, and if it matches up with any of the cases we define, run that block of code, but then forget about the rest. Okay, let's jump into that. So and to do a switch statement, you type the word switch, and then, just like the if statement, you have the open and closing parentheses, and now inside these parentheses, you type the variable you want to switch. So, in our case, we're going to switch our first variable. And just like the if statement, to, s to put code inside of a switch case, we want to start it with the open and curly braces. Just like that. Now, inside of here, we're going to ask it questions, but we're going to make those questions into to, to cases. So, in order to do cases, we would literally just type the word case. So, case, and then, what's the case? Um, okay, so if it's 10. Alright, so, so if first variable is equal to 10, we can tell it, oops, I should explain, after you write the case name, you put a colon after it. And then I like to to break it, I'll put a break, new line, whatever you want to call it, and just echo, it is 10. Awesome. And to stop the case from continuing on, we have to break the case. So after we're done writing the code we want for that specific case, you type break, and then a semicolon. And then we can move on to the next case. So if the next case, if it's 11, it is 11. And break that case. And then, say none of these match. So if it's not 10, if it's not 11, 
what's this what's the standard default case if none of these are true well to define a default case you type the word default put your colon new line and then you can say no match found you don't have to break uh, the default case if you don't want to because normally you put the default as your last case if you were to put default as your first case and not break it it'll run through all that code and I'll show you that afterwards so since our first variable is equal to 11 we should go back here and when we re refresh this it should say it is 11 awesome so now if we change this to 10 it is 10. What if we make it 9? No match was found. Now what this code is equivalent to if first variable equals 10 then we would echo it is 10. Else if first variable equals 11 echo it is 11 else echo no match found so if I were to refresh my page now I would get no match found printed out twice because it's 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 seeing the switch case first and then it's going through the steps of this this if statement block here that we have so now like I said before what if you forget the break so I'm going to remove the break from this case 10. I'm going to change first variable back to 10. And now if I refresh my page, it's going to go and execute both 10 and 11 block cases. So we have it is 10, it is 11 as our output. Now, this can come in handy actually. So say you want uh, let's do case 10 and then you could do multiple cases in itself so case 11 as well so case 10 and 11 will have the the same block of code it'll keep running through the code until that break statement is found let's do case 12 echo between 10 and 12 and then we break it and now let's let's do case 7 case 8 case 9 and then we could say echo between 7 and 9 make sure to break it so now if we were to refresh our page we would get that our number is between 10 and 12 <coughs> and if we change it to 11 still between 10 and 12 now say if we change it to 8 7 and 9 awesome and now, obviously, if we don't have a matching case, so we have first variable is equal to 6 now, we'd refresh, and it's going to tell us that no match was found. So now this, this, the equivalent code for this, would be if first variable equals 7. Actually, let's condense it. If it's greater than or equal to 7, and and first variable is less than or equal to 9 then it would echo between 7 and 9 else if first variable is greater than or equal to 10 and first variable is less than or equal to 12 we would echo out between 10 and 12 and then the final else else no match found pretty it's up to you which one you prefer to use but a switch case comes in handy when you have a lot a lot of things to compare it against so if I were to refresh this we would get no match found twice because it's six and now if we change it to eight we'll get between seven and nine twice so if you had many many cases so if I wanted to do a separate case for 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, I would have so much more code asking PHP with if, if statements. I would be asking, oh, is first variable 7? Okay, great, echo 7. Else is it 8? Else is it 9? Else is it 10, 11, or 12? Else, no match found. So, it's helpful. It's helpful to have these tools. Uh, so, yeah. And you can also compare variables to each other. I already showed you that. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking anymore. But, yeah. So, if we want to compare variables together, let's create this second variable. I'm going to create first variable as a string as well. So, hello. And hello. Now, I can say, if first variable is equal to second variable. Echo. The same. So now first variable is equal to second variable, so they're the same. Now here's a, a fun thing you can do. Let's say we make first variable the string of one, but we make second variable the plain integer of one. PHP can handle these types very nicely. When we use this double equal or not equal uh, operator, PHP is only checking the value of it. So if they were to be cast to a similar data type, if the values were the same, then they're equal. But say if you wanted to check if the first variable and the second variable have the same value and are the same data type, you would use a third equal sign. So if first variable equal, 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 second variable. So that means first variable and second variable must be, must be either the string of one or the integer of one. So if we were to refresh our page, we're going to get nothing. Because second variable is not the string of one. So if I were to make this the string of one now, we would get the same. And this also works with not equals. So if I were to return second variable back to the integer of 1 and ask if first variable is not equal equal to second variable, then, oh, I shouldn't say the same, they differ. But if I were to get rid of this other equal sign, I would get blank because technically the value is the same in both data types. It's just the type of data is different. So that is logical, conditional logic, sorry, spaced out. Conditional logic, PHP. Go ahead and uh, build some larger if statements and then try to make it into a condensed version in a switch statement. And go ahead and post that in the Google group, or um, just send me a message on UReddit. You can uh, send it to rec at UReddit, and I'll get it as an email. Uh, yeah, I will look at any code you guys give me. I'll give you any pointers if it needs to be improved. So, yeah, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday. All right, goodbye.